In this video, I'm going to talk about how to configure an MPL STP network that uses the Dragon nodes by Hirschman. And we're going to do this using the Hypervision software that comes with the Dragons. In order to configure the network, we are going to go over four simple steps. And let's go ahead and start with the step number one, which is start Hypervision. I already have my Hypervision started right here, but I didn't start the server yet, so let's go ahead and create a new database. Let's name it Demo. And select the database. Now that it's selected, let's go ahead and start the server. Which concludes our step one. And this may seem very obvious, but you have to have the server running before going ahead to the second step, otherwise the script will not work. So let's wait until the little square is green here, and there you go. Now we are ready. And now step two, let's go ahead and add the dragons. So in this step, you may be connected to your physical network. If you do, then come here on Discovery and add a new entry and the devices may, uh, will appear here on your screen as well as the links. So this is one easy part. But if you're just like me, I do not have any devices connected, then we are going to use virtual devices. And in order to do this, just <clears throat> let's come over network hardware and you can manually add all devices with the plus icon here. We'll just select the nodes and fill in the modules. And you'll have to do it one by one, or we can use a script, uh, a Python script that does this for us. In order to use the script, Let's minimize the screen here. I uh, set up a dragon ring script.zip file. Let's just copy it. What we have to do now is just paste it in the hypervision folder, which is right here. Hypervision. In the scripting folder of hypervision. So let's paste it and extract the files. Now you can see that we have three files right here. Um, this one.py is the one that does the magic. So you do not have to worry about having Python installed because Hypervision already comes with a built-in Python. And uh, we are pasting this files right here because we want the Python script to be ran with this Python executable. And that's why we just need to run this batch file right here. So just go ahead and run the batch and if everything is right you'll see success right here and now what we have to do is just see how many rings we want to create now uh, let's say two and the amount of nodes in the ring one let's say four so it's creating the four dragons now let's say for ring two three nodes Okay, now let's go back to the hypervision, and as you can see, now I have seven dragon nodes. All of them are 2210, and I also have the links that were created to connect them. We can see the topology here in layouts. So let's rearrange. And as you can see, we have now two separate rings which are ring number one and number two now let's center connect them what you need to do now is just edit let's say connect 2010 with 1020 let's add a link it could be any port select this one and now let's see this guy with this guy right here 
Okay. Seems good for me. And let's rearrange the layout. Oh. Okay. Beautiful. And this concludes the step number two. So we have all devices here connected to the network. Now we're ready to go ahead to step number three, which is create the tunnels. <laughs> So for steps number three and four, let's go back onto the dashboard and hit connections right here. And if we click on any of the links, we can see down here the display of all the tunnels and services that are running in all our links. And as we can see right here, the hypervision tool already configures a DCN channel that is responsible for propagating the configurations throughout all the nodes. So let's go ahead and create a tunnel, which is our step number three. Let's go here and click the button create tunnel. It's gonna be a little wizard window. As you can see, we can create basically four kinds of topology. Let's just create a point-to-point -to -point topology just for the example. Name it tunnel one. And let's use a protection path so it has a redundancy. Now, in this window, we have to select the entry point and the end point of the tunnel. Let's click next. Now we select the forwarding path. It's the main path that's going to be used. And now we'll select the protection path, which is going to be used if the main path is broken. Now there is a little, let's just leave it standard, recovery times. Just click next again. So it's a visual overview of the topology. And let's click finish. Now the difference between having the actual devices, the physical devices connected, is that I can get load scenarios. And now, if I were connected to the network, I could click on load here and the hypervision would upload a configuration to the devices, but it's not the case. Right here, let's just click close. But now we have our tunnel created, so we are able now to create several services within this tunnel. So this would be our step four. In order to do this, let's just come here in the services button. Let's create a new service. Let's say, I don't know, Goose. It's going to be an Ethernet service, port based. And the services, they must be created only in LAN ports. And as a default configuration, all the devices, they come with the ports all set in WAN. So let's click on the magic WAN right here and click in this button. So we transform all not WAN ports into WAN. So all unused ports that for the WAN, they're gonna become LAN ports. Just click next here and finish. The wizard does it for us. And close since we don't have the devices connected. Now let's select the endpoint. So we can use all ports that are not used. I'm gonna select this one and this one. Let's say keep tag since we're using Goose, which uses VLAN tagging. And select this tunnel, which is the one that we created in the step before. And here we can select the bandwidth that we're going to reserve for this tunnel. So let's say 100 megs just for the Goose. And next, let's go ahead and finish. Just keep the load scenarios. And now, if we click on this link right here, we can see that our tunnel is created and it has a service called Goose within it. And it has 100 megabits per second reserved just for this service. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next. Bye.